Hey everybody, uh, this is Jen coming at you on my downtime. Hope you're all having a great day. I'm doing a little bit better in my situation since the last video, uh, but I wanted to post this video actually as a video response uh, to Boundless Eyes. I'm actually watching her video day one, single woman and silver lining. So, okay, you went through a really harsh breakup and um, you lost a job because, well, as far as I could tell by watching your vlogs, you really couldn't stand it to begin with. Um, and the fact that you had to travel all the way the fuck to Brighton just to see this guy all the time. And now you're saying that you've been with him for over a year. And um, that the one part that kind of confuses me is when you say that, oh, I really liked this guy for a year and such and such. A year and some change. I'm sorry, but after a year, you must have been in love with that guy. Especially if you literally have gone out of your way suppressing your own emotions and your own thoughts in order to make him happy. And then when he leaves you, he acts as if all of your efforts had gone to nothing. It's like, it's crap. Um, so obviously you were in love with him, I hate to say it, but please admit it to yourself. If you've been with somebody for at least a year, you're traveling back and forth, you've like ditched a job that you couldn't stand anyway because you wanted to see him more, and you wanted a better life for yourself, obviously you were circumventing your life around this guy, which means you loved him. You loved him. Absolutely. I hate to break it to you like that. Um. Another part that uh, you had in your video that you said, um, let me play it back. I'm sorry, man, because this actually got me. Hold it. Let me play this. Hold it. You're trying not to fall into a well of depression because you're prone to doing that. Sometimes I'm prone to doing that myself. Not very often, though. I usually do that when I've either lost somebody um, in a relationship like you just have, or that person had just passed away. Let's go on. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to the point, man. Hang on. Right. That. The point where you say everyone that you, you feel like everyone that you love always leaves you. You remind me right now so much of what I used to be like when I was younger. Um, not in my teens, even though it began in the teens. Um, everybody that I love always leaving me. Either they had passed away or they left for whatever reason, like we were no longer friends anymore, whatever. And it like, it went from my teenage years into early adulthood years into my early twenties I've literally lost people um, to death and also from relationships that I was seriously involved in and it really is heartbreaking because for me personally when I'm involved with somebody on that level I've been with them for at least a year and I've fallen in love with them my life it, like a part of a huge part of my life is all about them <clears throat> it's not just about them it's not th just them that I fall in love with it's their families I fall in love with it's their social circles I fall in love with and when you do that <clears throat> when you do that um, and you're broken away from it the pain hits you in such a way that says that you're losing everything because you feel like you're losing everything. When you are that focused on somebody from your heart, solely from your heart, uh, your mind and your spirit even, which means you obviously love that person, when you've gotten to that point, you just focus on that and that only because you want to build that so bad. You just want that to happen. And I know where you're coming from on that. I really do. Because I've been there. I know what it is to not just fall in love with somebody that I've been with for over a year, or even over two years. 
Um, but I also know what it is to fall in love with the family, fall in love with the, the circle, and suddenly be broken from all of that. Because that's not just a breakup from him, that's a breakup from everybody. And you often wonder to yourself, do some of these people think highly or lowly of me? Why? Like those thoughts kind of cross your mind while you're wallowing in depression over it, you're mourning over it. You're just like, why did it end so badly? Did any of these people support it? Did they object it? Do any of them think at all anything of me? You know, you, you, like your self-esteem starts to sink. And that's probably why uh, the depression sinks in, to be honest. I know, because I've been there, like I said, you know, from my teenage years to my early adulthood. I am now 30 years of age, and I have, uh, here's the silver lining, I've come to a point where I've gone through so much experience to where I've built myself enough, I've acquired enough skills, I have built enough stamina in myself, in my personal life, to where if something does not exactly align with me, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be even slightly off kilter, but if sh should I catch a red flag, it's out with it. I say, no, sorry, will not put up with it. Because I'll tell you something, all this that you're going through right now is going to add on to your list of don'ts. The things that you are not going to put up with from a person that you are in any kind of relationship, a friendship, um, a romantic relationship especially, and even family. I mean, when somebody really stabs you in the back, it hurts like hell. And um, when you're, when you love that person and their family and their social circle and they all like seem to just dissipate and disappear. Well, obviously that's not on your word, that's on that person's word. So it all goes back to that person. You understand? It's not really about what the family thinks, what the friends think. It's about what that person embedded in their minds about you. So when you look back on this one day, you're going to say to yourself, it really was all about that person. My pain, my suffering, my depression, my upsetment, my anxiety, my everything, the way that I changed myself for this person was all surrounding that person. I gave myself for that person completely. I've risked it, took it all, done it. That's what you did. And you're going to look back on that someday and realize that it all comes back to that person. Not their family, not their friends, that person. Because if their family and their friends have sense enough, they'll come back to you. And they'll say, hey, how's it going? You know, I'm not going to hold a grudge, whatever. I don't hate you. Um, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, I thought this about you, but, you know, we're cool. And that's always a step up. You don't need to look forward to that, though, because there's a lot that's going to happen for you in between that time. You're going to build yourself in your career sector. Any industry that you choose to be involved in, you will do good in. Why? Because now you have the drive. You have nothing to lose. That's why. You've been let down now <clears throat> to the point where you have nothing to lose. And when you have nothing to lose, the only way to go, I know it's a cliche, but it's true, is up. The only way to go is up. But the only person that is going to take you there is you. And how do you do that? Don't just go from job to job to job. Research. Research different skills, things that you're interested in, things that you want to do, things that you want to have an acumen in, things that you want to learn and know from the back of your hand. As long as you have that drive and that ambition in you, you will achieve it. 
And when you achieve it, it's not only going to help you personally, it's going to help you professionally, and it's going to help your family life a lot more because I'm sure that your family is worried about you right now. I know that. My family was worried about me when I went through the same period that you're going through right now. I can see myself in you. Which is why I made this video response to begin with, otherwise I wouldn't have bothered. I would have just left some comment or something. But anyway, I know that this has gone long enough. You will find your center, but you have to build up to it through ambition and the willingness to learn new skills, to take on any challenges that face you. And if they don't face you, look for them. Look for them. Hunt them down and get them. Because that is exactly what's going to rebuild your life, no matter what you choose. I honestly wish you the best. I really do. And yeah, I had to make this video response because, um, I've been where you are right now, like I said. You're not going to be there forever. I'm 30 years old right now, looking back. Shit's hard right now because of the fucking recession, but I'm still smiling. You know why? Because I have skills. I'm not afraid to work hard. I'm not afraid to take challenges. And if they're not given to me, I'm going to look for them, and I'm going to take those. And if I have to jump ship, so be it. Just to do so. Because I am the designer of my own destiny. I mean it. I mean it. I lived it, so I know. I am the designer of my own destiny. I made that so. I took my power back. I took my heart back. I took my mind back, and I took my spirit back. And by doing that, I'm able to find all the answers that I need to any of my problems from within. And by grounding that strength and pulling from that strength for answers, you'll make it. Trust me. So I'm going to be. I really wish you the best. I do. And I honestly hope you accept this um, video response. Take care of yourself and please have a drink on me. You deserve time now. But pull yourself together and don't be afraid to do it, man. I know you're not. But you're going to look back on this shit one day. You're not going to laugh. But you're going to see it as a mark of strength.